For as long as man has taken to the sea, there have been tales of monsters who reigned over the ocean. Frightened beasts with huge heads, claw-like fins, and trident-shaped tails. Florida's warm waters attract a variety of aquatic predators, whales, sharks, and something else. Here in the inlets where fresh and seawater mix, something unknown is said to surface quickly, only to disappear, leaving no trace or evidence until now. An ambush predator comes up from the it, it comes up from the bottom. Well, this thing was out of the water and moving, uh, and, and and I would say it probably went about 30, 40 yards uh, pretty quickly. It, it was a shock to see something like that, and they looked uh, they had almost like a turtle, uh, like a loggerhead turtle kind of a head on them, big big eyes and uh, big nostrils on them. Which is very odd because there isn't anything else that would be like that down here. Eyewitnesses report seeing a creature that bears an amazing resemblance to sea serpents described hundreds of years ago. Accounts tell of sea monsters with a large body, a blunt, misshapen head, protruding teeth, sharp-pointed fins or flippers, and a distinctive trident-shaped tail. The first reports of a sea monster in Florida came in 1849. Passengers on a schooner saw something swimming off the coast of Jacksonville. Witnesses described a bizarre creature with a large snake-like head and fins that looked like claws. The beast rose out of the water and pursued them. Now, a Florida resident claims to have had a similar encounter. Not once, but many times. I guess people just didn't know what they were at that time and just labeled it a sea monster. Gene Sauerwine, who has fished Florida's coastal lakes for the last four decades, is the latest to report seeing an unknown creature in these waters. When I was seeing these bits and pieces, that's when I was really shocked. It's like, wow, you know, this is something I've never seen and, you know, I believe is totally unknown to, to science. Well, I was just right over yonder doing some fishing and just trying to get a tight line, minding my own business, and uh, just saw something I couldn't identify. I've lived here my whole life, knew what all the local wildlife looks like, and uh, just had no idea. And then I saw a couple clear shots of its head, and I realized, whoa, this is something that uh, isn't known currently. Sarwine shared the discovery with his brother. I happened to be in town, and he says, come on over, you need to take a look at this. And I know we came out. The sun was setting, and uh, when, when we first got there, we didn't see much, and maybe a couple popped up here and there, couldn't really tell. Uh, as, as, as we kept watching, I looked up and saw one come out of the water. Uh, had, had I been out in the water, I would have been extremely scared. I've been fishing and diving all my life, and this is unlike anything I've ever seen. And unlike the old mariners of the 1800s, Sarawine has proof. The next day, I came back with a video camera and uh, started documenting the whole situation, and uh, it's been a passion ever since. He has recorded over 40 hours of video evidence, but Gene Sarawine has been reluctant to show it to anyone for fear the creature would be disturbed. I went to really great lengths to uh, keep it secret. I'd uh, hide my camera in a five-gallon bucket. Sarawine continued to photograph the creature many times over the last decade, but got no closer to learning its identity. Not everyone believed him. There is definitely more than one animal. Dr. Martina DeWitt, a research scientist with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, looks for features she recognizes in the footage. You want to know, is it a fish? Is it um, a marine mammal? I cannot see any scales which would mean that it would be a fish. What I see here, it probably belongs to the same animal that we see the back from, and you see um, what I think is the animal's tail coming out. Here you see the back coming out of the water, and um, since there's not a dorsal fin on it, 
it's unlikely that it would be some kind of uh, dolphin. DeWitt is examining the hours of video evidence to attempt to make a determination of the species. The Monster Quest expedition team is preparing to probe the waters near where Sarawan shot his video. Dale Pearson, a professional diver and underwater researcher, will be leading the search. We don't know what it is. It has the potential to move quickly with a lot of power, and everything in the wild has a way to defend itself. Due to the team's lack of data about the beast or knowledge of how many creatures there are, extreme caution is necessary. They have determined from the footage that the beasts appear to move with surprising speed. What is that? I guess that's its tail. What I want to find out is what can this thing, what kind of capabilities does it have before we go trying to swim up on it in the murk? Water doesn't look very clear. What's this? The location itself presents challenges and danger. These waters are home to alligators, stingrays, and barracuda. Due to the dangerous conditions, the team will be using Blueview sonar technology, which is currently used primarily for guarding U.S. ports. Unlike traditional sonar, which uses a single beam of sound, Blueview sonar uses 256 individual beams to create a more detailed image. And this is a diver in the water. The target of the search is along the Atlantic coast, just miles away from a heavily trafficked tourist area. Sarawine has agreed to guide the team to the area, but he has asked that the exact location of the creatures not be revealed. I think that, you know, we need to protect them so we, you know, might be able to find out more. Their destination is a large ocean-fed coastal lake, a narrow waterway that connects to the Atlantic Ocean. The only way you can identify a sea animal is to be in the sea. The reason we're doing this mission is to, to solve the, the riddle of, of what this thing is. And the only way we're going to do that is to get in the water, get up to it, get some video reconnaissance and surveillance of this and bring it to some biologists, bring it to some, some people who study marine animals and hopefully they can identify it. There are swamps and marshes on one side of the lake which make the lake water extremely murky. But it is something else that makes the divers take special precautions. This is not fake footage. Something is there that we don't know what it is. There's a lot of invasive species that have been let loose in Florida. We already know that there's alligators, American crocodiles. Those are the wild cards of this expedition. Those are the things that are going to make this more dangerous and cause a little bit more concern for me as a diver being in that situation. The team has enlisted an experienced dive paramedic to join them, just in case. Just swim towards it and you just keep tracking. The divers get one last briefing on the new sonar. These sonars are like flashlights. Okay. All right, you're painting the bottom of, of the ocean like a flashlight. The steeper the image, the closer you're looking, and the brighter it's going to be right in front of you. The topside sonar unit sweeps a 300 square foot area around the boat, allowing the crew to track the divers and any other large objects in the water. Perfect. Okay, so if I acquire a target with this, I'll be able to track the target even though it's moving. Correct. You just keep you just keep it pointed at it. It's a real-time acoustic camera. Okay. The divers take precautionary measures. Anything that has the potential to harm you, you're going to wear full body Neptunic chainmail armor. That's going to um, reduce the amount of cut of any types of biting, teeth, claws, beaks, hooks, whatever this thing may have. You can still have an arm or a leg medically severed inside your suit. The expedition positions itself in open water. Go ahead and lead, and then when you get to the edge of the channel, we'll pass you over and start scanning with sonar. Over. Sounds good. This, the last hour of daylight will be the best. It'll be the deepest water, and if they're going to be back there, that's when we'll see them. Okay. All right, let's drop an anchor right here, then. We'll start a search grid right here. 
Tell you one thing, if it's here, we're gonna find it, though. Very weird. I've never seen this. Monster Quest has sent the sour wine footage to wildlife expert Dr. Edward Patuk, who has advanced degrees in marine biology, zoology, paleontology, and oceanography. In heaven's name is that. This here's coming back up. Dr. Patuk teaches at Florida Atlantic University and frequently leads student expeditions to study the marine life of southeast Florida. It's here I spent 30 years tromping around in this area. I've never seen this. I'm very impressed. Oh, there you go. That's a, that's a big animal coming up. That one, I don't know if that is actually an eye or not. It's not completely dark. It has mottled gray and, and darker patterns on it, too. Very interesting. That is, that's very wild. I wish they could, you know, get, get more pictures of this thing, pull it up. They're going the wrong way. Yeah. The divers are scanning for evidence, but the water is dangerously full of sediment, churned up by a mix of fresh and salt water. They are swimming blind, dependent on directions from topside. Lead diver topside, 30 degrees to your left. Yeah, topside be advised, we are in a zero visibility condition right now. I can barely, barely see the screen on the navigator. Any information you have? Uh, as to our vector is helpful. The team knows the danger of diving in water this dark. If a diver is attacked, the topside crew would have no visual clue. So the communication system is all that is keeping them safe. If you're by the base, is uh, about 20 feet behind you. We got Roger, I've lost contact with the diver. Monster Quest is in Florida, searching for the identity of a sea monster which has been caught on tape. Lead diver, lead diver from top side, lead diver from top side. The expedition team has been searching for a visual of its divers. This is top side, how do you copy? They've lost communications and visual contact. Yeah, base diver, we're not making uh, contact with uh, the lead diver, but apparently you guys are pretty near the uh, hole. We found it on the sonar. If he will turn around and start swimming, once he's moving, I can give him a vector. After a few tense minutes, the team reestablishes communications, and not wanting to take chances, the divers head back to the boat to regroup. It's when I lost you, I was able to sonar down, and I could see you in yeah. the sonar. I mean, I could barely see the sonar. I had to plaster my face to it, but then I could find you and was able to hunt you down there when yeah. we got separated. Because if, if I'm looking at the sonar and you're filming and you take your eyes off me, all it takes is one second. One second, yeah. And then that's it. We're separated and yeah. bad things can happen. Those kinds of reports seem to be very specific to Florida. Lauren Coleman is a cryptozoologist and has studied